All right, we are going to get started. Thank you everyone for joining. We are very excited to have you all here today. And Rudy, you can go to the next slide, perfect. Um, so this session today is the second webinar session in the Calibri Virtual Learning Spaces series. This is following our first session in January that was focused on the use of Calibri during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the goal of this whole initiative is to support Learning Equality's vision of building community and sharing experiences around using Calibri. And we're just going to take one more moment. Um, please, we'd love to know who is here. So if on your Zoom controls, you can find your name. And um, if your name is not um, accurately showing who you are, please go ahead and edit it um, to uh, put your name. And then also if you're willing to share your country and also whatever organization you are part of. Um, that would be great. Okay. So we are focusing today's webinar around the topic of teacher training. So this will be particularly relevant for anyone in the audience who facilitates teacher trainings or is a teacher themselves. And we will be introducing our approach to educator support and the training of trainers model that we use. And through this, we will share our training toolkit. We recently adapted our toolkit for non-formal and emergency in education contexts. And we will be introducing those today as well. We will also be hearing from several speakers who are all members of the Calibri community that have experience not only in implementing Calibri, but in training others as well. So we are very excited for these speakers because Calibri is successful because of the ways that educators have used it in their different contexts. And we wanted to use this space to really celebrate teachers and educators and the work that they are doing. And then lastly, we will give everyone an opportunity for um, you all to connect directly with each other and share some of your own experiences. Next slide, please. So for our agenda today, I'll be starting off by sharing a little about our approach to educator support and what's inside our Calibri toolkit. And then we'll have a chance to hear from our speakers about their experiences training on Calibri. We will then take some questions and we will end with breakout groups so that you can connect directly with each other. And for the breakout groups, please keep in mind that this will be happening at the end in case you need to move at that point to a place where you can speak out loud for a few minutes if you are able to. So our team at Learning Equality has been a leading organization for eight years now with a laser focus on equity. We're designing and creating quality digital learning experiences using human-centered design, all for those without the internet. And my name is Laura Danforth. I am our global community lead, and I support the development of our training materials and our toolkit, as well as think through how to best support and engage members of our community. I'm based here in the US, and I'm also a former elementary school teacher here in the States. So we purposely structured this session to be a Zoom meeting as opposed to the more formal um, option of a webinar so that we could facilitate more engagement as a group and also use our breakout rooms to chat later. 
So this means that we are inviting you to write your questions and your comments in the chat box throughout the session, particularly any questions that you might have for our panelists. Um, please do, however, remain on mute so that we can hear our speakers and also feel free to engage on social media either during or after this using our Calibri Fly hashtag. So let's start with a quick intro activity to see who is on our call today. So if you are able to type, um, please go to the chat and share your name, your organization, and the country where you are connecting from. And we'll see who we, who we have here. Work. Yeah, because I just to be connected to the committee. Right? Great. Seeing Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, Romania, some from the US, the UK. Wonderful. Looks like we've got people from all over the world. So that's fantastic. <laughs> Great. Okay, I'm going to keep going to the next slide, but keep dropping in your intro in the chat so that we can connect. All right, so for a brief background, in case anyone is new to us, Calibri is Learning Equality's adaptable set of open solutions, specially designed to support offline first teaching and learning. And next slide, please. Uh, learners are definitely at the core of the work that we do, but our ecosystem aims to support educators, administrators, content creators, and implementers to ensure that we are working towards creating equitable learning opportunities for all learners. And so our educator approach here is threefold, um, starting with the Calibri application, we make available a content repository along with educator facing resources, such as lesson plans and other guidance materials. And then built in tools also support the creation of lessons and quizzes, as well as to track learner progress and encourage differentiation in lesson planning. Then we have the toolkit. This is a set of customizable training materials and presentations that are available on our website to be adapted to a variety of contexts. And these can be used to facilitate training sessions to integrate Calibri and blended learning models into different learning environments. And lastly, key, uh, key to all of this is collaboration. So, that's true in every implementation, which you'll see as well from our presenters. Um, no one person can do this alone. And so for our part um, our, on our team, we've tried to foster a community space through places like our community forum and also sessions like this. And so hopefully today you will take away some ideas for what kinds of collaboration is needed to support your own successful practices. Next slide, please, thanks. Uh, okay, so our training approach for the toolkit materials focuses around these four different areas, which are um, expanding teacher knowledge, developing the necessary skills, building and strengthening beliefs around teacher practices, and then actually facilitating hands-on practice opportunities. Okay, so here we have a preview of the Calibri toolkit, which includes training presentations, implementation and blended learning resources, as well as some at home learning guidance for COVID-19. It's been fully translated into French, Arabic and Spanish, 
And just this week, we've released some new updates to the toolkit. We added new materials for ongoing educator support. We've put in some resources and guides for using Calibri Studio for curriculum alignment work. And we've also translated the implementation pack into several new languages. And then in addition to this, we've created two new training packs, one which is targeted towards anyone who is using Calibri in a non-formal context, and one for education in emergencies and crisis contexts, which is coming soon. Um, you can access the toolkit at the link listed on the bottom of the slide. It's also on our website. And you can see, hopefully see here from the GIF that it lives in Google Drive. This is purposeful so that it's easier for you to make copies and to edit it for your personal needs. Um, everything in it is openly licensed and we have an overview document as well that goes through everything that's inside. Next slide. Great. So. As we get ready to release our new training packs, we are very interested in anyone from the community who might be willing to review them and to provide feedback. We know that you all are the experts here on what materials resonate with your colleagues and your teachers. And so this is um, kind of an open call to please reach out to us if you are interested in learning more about reviewing our materials and also the kinds of feedback that we would like. Um, so yeah, please contact us if this is of interest. And as I mentioned in one of the last slides, we've released some training materials around Calibri Studio. And I wanted to just take a moment to highlight them here. So Calibri Studio is our online curriculum tool and we're very excited to have this set of materials that's focused specifically on supporting the alignment of the resources that are available in the Calibri Content Library. Um, we also, with this, have some video tutorials and a workbook to help guide you through getting started with Calibri Studio. So as I wrap up, this part of our session, I think it's good to note that there's many different ways you can use our materials and to structure your own Calibri sessions. And that's based on the structure of your organizations and the resources that you might have available. So I thought it would be helpful to share one scaffolded model that we have seen work, um, which is to start by having a small group of implementing staff read through all of the toolkit materials and familiarize with Calibri. Then as a next step, um, the staff could train a select group of teachers from different schools to kind of lead a, a full comprehensive training with. The length for this can vary. Um, in this case, it was two days. And then those teachers then went back to their schools to train the rest of their colleagues. So again, this is just one option to get everyone thinking about what might work well for you. Great, next slide. So the learning equality team has also delivered a variety of training sessions through collaborations and partnerships. And when we do them, we use all of the same materials that are available in the toolkit. Um, one of our favorite energizers is to play the game Simon Says with a technology focus. <laughs> you can see that in the bottom right photo. Um, you can also find the instructions for that in our facilitation manual. Um, and also like the rest of the world, we've uh, had to adapt during the pandemic and we've been doing virtual trainings over Zoom, like in the bottom left photo. And you know, through all of this, we are still learning as we go. So as we transition over to our panelists who will be sharing their own insight into training with Calibri today, I hope that you will learn something new that resonates with you and that you can take with you today. And before we introduce our panelists, uh, we wanted to do a quick 
poll to see kind of where everyone is, if you're familiar with Calibri and kind of how much you have engaged with some of our materials. So there's two questions here. Um, we should be launching the poll in just a, a second, but um, take a look at the two questions and go ahead and answer. So the first question is, have you used the Calibri EdTech Toolkit materials to train others in your organization? And then the other question is, how often do you plan and facilitate professional development at your organization? So this is more of a general professional development question. So we'll give everyone a minute just to answer that. Okay, hopefully everyone's had a chance to answer. Are we able to share the results of our poll? Maybe we can share it after. <laughs> um, great, thank you. I think we can go ahead and move to the next slide in the meantime. Perfect. So we have a few, oh, here's the results to our poll. <laughs> we'll take a quick look. So it looks like about um, half of the participants have used the Calibri toolkit. Um, and looks like there's a, a mix in terms of frequency for um, professional development. So we are gonna, as I mentioned before, have breakout rooms towards the end of this. So it'd be great to hear about your different experiences with both of these questions there. Great, so we have a few speakers um, who we'll be hearing from today. Each of our speakers will have about seven minutes to present. Um, I am going to do my best to give a, a warning when there's a minute left for each of our speakers. Um, please write your questions in the chat as they are going, because we'll do a Q&A at the end and we'll try and pull out um, some of the most relevant questions that we can direct towards them. And I think, yeah, I think that is, that is it. So we can go to our first speaker, the next slide. And uh, first we have Isaac Agwal, who is both an ICT consultant and an ICT teacher. It's based in Uganda and has been facilitating the use of Calibri at the Luwiro Diocese Education Department. He's also been supplementing the existing Calibri library with his own videos that he's created on ICT skills. So thank you, Isaac, and I will turn it over to you. Yeah. Uh, Laura, can you hear me? Yes, you sound great. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it is a great pleasure to present on this interactive session uh, of teacher training and educator support with Colibri. Uh, we can go straight to the next slide because I don't. I would start by giving the br that brief background about rural diocese secondary schools. And this background is on two areas, opportunities and challenges. The opportunity we have is that we have 27 secondary schools under this diocese with an estimation of around 9,000 students and 40 ICT teachers then uh, there is also a change in curriculum, which was done in 2020. And we are calling this an opportunity because it emphasizes uh, learner-centered uh, learning, where learners are supposed to uh, do a lot of work by themselves as the teachers are moderating. And this gives us an opportunity to use this Colibri learning platform to facilitate learning in schools. However, there are also challenges that we have in the diocese. Uh, that is, uh, we have most of our schools in rural areas 
uh, poor I mean power problems with very few computers compared to the number of the students that we have in schools no internet if it is there then that internet is unreliable uh, most teachers have never used computers in these schools then uh, the unfortunate part the old curriculum is more of frontal learning uh, so those are the challenges and opportunities that I can present. Uh, then on our next slide, uh, that is uh, a situation that uh, I can uh, show in terms of pictures, very many students trying to access the computers, then we have some trainings and some few labs with very few computers and very old uh, computers. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, on our next slide, uh, before the closing of schools due to COVID-19, we had started introducing Colibri in schools uh, in our diocese. And this started with uh, making our leaders in schools, that is the bishop, the education department, the head teachers, the ICT teachers, uh, to get aware of how important Colibri is in facilitating learning. Then we had also started preparing schools and this started with having ICT basic workshops for our teachers, that is in some schools. And also we had started uh, Colibri workshops for the teachers in our model schools where we have Colibri. And we had also installed uh, Colibri in our nine secondary schools on at least one uh, computer. And after installing, we had had also a short one-on-one -on -one training for the ICT teachers, as we can see on that picture to the right. Then we had also a plan to go ahead and train all our ICT teachers and other teachers. Uh, on our next slide, uh, on the next slide, uh, our plan uh, never stopped because of COVID. We went on to have our Colibri online trainings during the lockdown. So we engaged our teachers with this training and we trained a number of uh, teachers. We had 30 ICT teachers trained in smaller groups and in some sessions. Then we had 130 teachers in other subject areas. These other subject areas, we are looking at those teachers who are not specializing in teaching ICT. So such teachers, uh, we train them in four smaller groups, uh, introducing them on the importance of ICT as we shall see and some contents. Then uh, last month, we had a training that was covering the entire country, that is Uganda, where we had 80 different teachers uh, trained on how to use Colibri and most of them were able to appreciate and install this program on their computers. Uh, the session uh, duration for our training majorly under the diocese uh, for the ICT teachers, we would have them in three sessions and each session taking one and, uh, and 30 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes. Then these other teachers, because uh, they are not so much conversant with ICT, we do train them and this will take us from two hours and 30 minutes training to engage them so that they can uh, cope up with our speed and learn this platform. Uh, then on the next slide, uh, that is a screenshot for our different uh, online workshops we had. Um, I'm happy and we are very happy that our participants or our teachers in the diocese were always are very positive for this, these trainings and they were implementing the programs in schools. Uh, next uh, slide, uh, on the next slide, we are trying to show that different are covered for the ICT teachers. We had to show them an internet-based Colibri platforms that is in Uganda. Then we showed them how to download and have installation of Colibri on computers, set some admin rights, and then learn account, import and export resources, because this is 
uh, one of the major goal that we have that resources should be on these computers for offline uh, usage, how to have uh, an account created on Colibri Studio then upload uh, that content on that studio. Then for the other teachers, uh, we focused much on how uh, to use Colibri, uh, then having accounts. Uh, we also showed them the resources uh, that is provided by UNICEF in Uganda and government. Then there is also another resource, a platform where we have uh, Colibri uh, resources that is National Association of Christian Schools in Uganda. We also showed them so that they can see that yes, Colibri can be utilized and it has a lot of resources that can benefit the students. We also went ahead and encouraged them to have offline Colibri in schools. In our next slide, uh, in the next slide, besides uh, the achievements that we are having because some schools are already running and using Colibri, there are some challenges that we face that is less a space on hard disks, uh, less on old uh, computers in our schools, improper installation of uh, Windows, because a uh, majority of schools are using Windows 7. So we all reserve that challenge of DLL missing. Viruses are so disturbing. You install today, tomorrow, or in the next term, you find uh, the Colibri platform is off. Then there is also a challenge of uh, uh, no networked computers in school, so you have to go on each individual computer and have this, uh, the, the software installed, then sound card and the speakers are always uh, missing in some labs, but we try to provide. Then on our next uh, slide, we have the solutions to those challenges, that is training the ICT teachers so that they can support these other teachers. Uh, then we also trained these other teachers on ICT basics because a uh, majority of them are unable to use computers. So that is the strategy we have for the schools. We first install antiviruses and we run a full scan. Uh, then where possible, we have Windows 10 installed on some computers because sometimes the versions fail to work on specific uh, Windows. So we we play it like that. Then we use flash drives to install Colibri. So we have Colibri resources exported on the flash drives. Then we just do everything offline. Then we give easy access to the whole class. Uh, we do not set or create some other extra classes on our Colibri platforms because we have a number of students in our streams. Then in, if you look at the number, the stream can have 60 to 100 students and there you have four to five streams. So creating classes may be a challenge and students accessing may also be a challenge. In our next uh, slide, uh, on the next slide, uh, here are the tips for our success. We have created our own resources and these resources are in simple language with a Ugandan accent so that uh, our teachers or our participants can follow step by step. Besides that, we also provide step by step explanation for everything pertaining Colibri. Then our own contents have also been created and these are, uh, for now it is IT contents and we are also spreading to the different schools and we are still encouraging other teachers to go ahead and have their contents come on board. We are using a YouTube channel and websites to help other teachers also uh, follow up on how to download, install, import and export resources and do any other things related to Colibri uh, installation and usage in the schools. Then. Uh, another tip for success is seeking the acceptance. So we go ahead and engage heads of schools. They have been very positive and they are and welcoming us in their schools. So we are really working well with heads uh, of schools. Then trainings. Uh, we have trainings uh, always uh, 
one-on-one -on -one, uh, trainings with the ICT teachers so that they get the entire uh, picture of Colibri, then be the experts in their schools to support these other teachers. Then you also do small group uh, training so that they can uh, be engaged. Then they ask those questions as a trainer, you clarify to them, and then they will be able to go ahead and do uh, exactly uh, what they're supposed to do to make it easier for our, uh, our teachers. Uh, we have no special classes, uh, like I've said. So this is also a tip for our success in the schools. Then uh, using uh, Colibri online trainings, like right now, we are unable to meet in big groups. We always encourage other people who want to learn Colibri to, to, do, to utilize the video conferencing platforms like we are using, that is if it is possible. So uh, that's how we are doing it in, uh, in Luero Diocese uh, schools. Uh, that is uh, the end of uh, my presentation. I would like to thank you very much for this opportunity. Great. Thank you so much, Isaac. That was fantastic. Um, and for everyone who is joining, we will be uh, able to share a copy of these slides afterwards. I know there are some great tips in here for how to structure and scaffold um, training sessions. So we'll be sharing that after for anyone who is interested. Great, so we will move on to our second speaker. Um, next, we have Omang Agarwal from Pratham in India. He works on the Pratham Digital Initiative where they are using Calibri in two different community-based models um, that we will be hearing about. So Omang, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, you sound great. Fantastic. Could we move on to the next slide then? All right, thank you everyone for having me. Uh, just a quick glance at uh, what we do at Pratham. Uh, so Pratham is one of India's oldest organizations and probably one of the largest uh, in the country at this point of time. Um, we've got quite a few wings, but some that I think are more relevant to talk about here includes uh, our Pratham education wing that uh, sort of trains teachers and empowers children all over India uh, with the brick and mortar programs that we run. We've also got a big vocational institute uh, and we run the ASAR survey, which is uh, India's largest citizen led survey, uh, talking about the status of education in the country. Um, we've got a Pratham uh, PCVC is what we call it. Uh, it's an advocacy center that works on uh, preventing children from getting trafficked. Uh, and finally, we've got Pratham Digital, which is uh, our latest new West wing. It's only been uh, five years of our existence. Um, and we sort of empower the other wings to work uh, digitally while running our independent programs as well. Um, could we move on to the next one? All right. So that's pretty much been our journey. We started back in 2015 um, as an experiment to see if we could use tablets uh, to run uh, learning interventions. Over the next couple of uh, years, we explored not just the hardware aspect, but uh, also strongly built up on the building content in local contexts. Um, and that's where we started deploying Calibri um, in one of the two use cases, which I will shortly talk about uh, before talking about the other one. Uh, and that's where we stand today with uh, more than 14 state governments uh, in India itself working along with Pratham. Can we move ahead, Nora? Yeah. Um, so I know it, it, this might seem a bit uh, awkward as a diagram to explain, but um, I can take you all three of these uh, to sort of explain why we had, uh, you know, Calibri deployed in the first place. Uh, so at Pratham Digital, all of our programs sort of run through these three pillars, which is we build learning content that we host on digital infrastructure, and then we create a social infrastructure uh, to make sure that uh, everybody that has access to learning now can actually engage with learning and learn from it. And it's towards uh, 
the latter half, which is, you know, building up a digital infrastructure and creating a social infrastructure uh, is, is, you know, where we use Calibri. Um, I'm sure you'll have a copy of this slide so you can read further. Uh, can we move ahead, Laura? Okay, so that's the first use case. Um, so initially, as we began our interventions in um, Indian communities, we would uh, we we try to understand how over the internet we could uh, sort of send out the content that was being created by Pratham. Um, and over a period of time, we realized that in many communities that we work, internet was so bad that we probably could not use this. So we would have this backup option of using uh, you know storage device cards that we would send out to these communities. Uh, to sort of update each and every tablet one by one. However, that option did not prove uh, fruitful to us as well. The reason being uh, in transportation itself, we would lose out on much of our SD cards. Plus it was a very slow process, especially when we had a lot of content being developed over a period of time. Um, that's where option three came into being, which is where we started using Calibri. We started building offline content repositories using a device called Raspberry Pi in each and every community that we worked in. Um, and the Calibri Studio uh, that we used uh, was sort of made as a local server for us through which we would access the content on these Raspberry Pi devices. Laura, could we move ahead? Yes, there we go. So um, that's that is what our digital infrastructure uh, looks like at this point of time. Uh, we've got the Calibri Content Studio, which is where Pratham will host. Uh, Pratham hosts all of its content, but at the same point of time, we access content that is present across and provided by different other channels and organizations. Um, that through the Calibri server is then sent out to these Raspberry Pi devices, uh, which help us reduce internet bandwidth uh, requirement and help us update each and every curve, you know, tablet in these communities. Thereby, it does not reduce us to, you know, working offline completely, but somewhere or the other reduces uh, the need for internet. Uh, we again use the same infrastructure to get uh, data from uh, each of these devices back to Calibri Studio, which is where we use it as a local server, um, and then understand how these interventions are going. So this is sort of, uh, a little different from the usual way I think uh, all other organizations have been uh, using Calibri, but it helped us to expand not just our use case of hosting content, but at the same point of time accessing content which was well beyond uh, what we were producing. Uh, Laura, can you move ahead? So uh, what you see in the picture on the lower half is uh, what a Raspberry Pi kit with us looks like. Uh, and uh, that's the Raspberry Pi device, which sort of helps us uh, reduce the internet bandwidth and host the content uh, while using a Calibri device uh, or, or Calibri local server studio. I just wanted to show this as an example of, you know, what this could look like in a local community. Uh, can we move ahead? Right, so this is uh, what we call as the digital device library model, which is uh, the name of our program that we run across uh, Indian communities. Uh, the idea being that we create an offline uh, repository, which will host content from across maths, English, science, life, uh, skills and vocational and computer skills. All of this is hosted again on the Calibri Studio, which is then accessed through these Raspberry Pi devices onto the tablets. Can we move ahead, Laura? Okay, uh, now coming back to, you know, uh, where we were not so innovative and we were trying to use uh, Calibri to sort of facilitate the social infrastructure perspective. Um, and I'm sure a lot of organizations have used it in different ways, but I'd love to talk about how we use it in India. Can we move ahead? Okay, um, so I, I recall that I, I did not, you know, surely explain social infrastructure, which out of the three terms was the more awkward one in that particular diagram. Um, but, you know, right from 2015, as we started working, we explored the fact that just providing physical infrastructure in terms of Raspberry Pi devices, internet dongles or tablets was not enough in our communities. And we had to do something to engage 
uh, everybody in a community uh, and follow the learning of it takes you know the entire village to raise a child so we started involving different range of stakeholders to make sure that the edtech intervention in these communities could become uh, more facilitative and more engaging while the digital infrastructure also existed um, so in this regard, what Pratham Digital does is we engage community leaders, parents, children, as well as young people uh, to play different roles. Community leaders here um, sort of help uh, everybody in the community realize the lags in education and at the same point of time, advocate for the need of engaging interventions. Parents, uh, especially mothers at home, uh, act as a physical nudge uh, to help all of these children get back to the tab at least one hour a day and start reading or you know, making groups of children uh, to start learning from these tabs. Uh, then we've got children, obviously, uh, you know, the ones who are learning from these tabs and we engage them. Uh, sorry, not sure what happened. Uh, so yeah, we engage the children uh, through using uh, youth in the community. Uh, which is our a learning for learning kind of model. Uh, the idea behind that being that, you know, we had two distinct groups we wanted to train in every community. This was uh, the children, you know, foundational uh, numeracy literacy group. And then we also had young people in every community who we had to train on vocational and digital skills. So what we did is we run a program called uh, Code Clubs and Vocational Training. Uh, which empowers young people in these communities to not just learn vocational skills and digital uh, and get digitally trained. Uh, but uh, in order for them to continue doing that program, they sort of facilitate the same program or similar programs for children in their community, especially for foundational numeracy literacy. Um, we also understood that communities that we were interviewing in did not have local schools or did not have schools that were functional in nature which basically meant we did not have coaches or teachers around uh, to help in sorting out the interventions. Hence, we use these young people. Now that's, this is somewhere uh, I feel our use of Calibri and how we trained our young people to use uh, Calibri might have been a little different because we usually have teachers doing it, but we had a completely teacherless model. So young people here were using Calibri in two regards. One, to train themselves uh, on digital as well as vocational skills, both from content that Pratham made as well as other channels, as well as learn that content also from the perspective of teaching the children who had Pratham physical tablets and Pratham content present over Colibri uh, servers and learn it from there. So teachers were training themselves to move ahead in their career and to sort of become community developers and teachers and help other children in their community. Uh, Laura, can we move ahead? Yes, so this is what our teacherless uh, models will look like. Uh, every young volunteer will have a Prodigy kit, which is uh, one of the pictures that I showed you before with an antenna and the entire computer set. And they would go back to these you know, villages to sort of facilitate the program. Uh, those are some of the pictures of how these programs were being facilitated, where young people uh, who were in charge of the program learned these things on their own and came back to start teaching children uh, using all the devices. Uh, can we move ahead, Laura? Yeah. So again, to reiterate our program, uh, young people are trained at community centers. They then use uh, all of the devices to train the children, uh, both where we have physical infrastructure. You see the picture in the middle. It looks uh, rather more sophisticated because that's a place we actually had a school where a device could be installed. But if you see the third picture, you could clearly see that's been made shift. Uh, so, you know, sort of infrastructure was infused into the local community and uh, young people, you know, took care of the fact that we uh, went ahead uh, to train them in a certain way. Uh, can we move ahead? Okay, uh, so now just to talk a little more about, you know, the training that we provided to these young people. And I think uh, we will be glad to share some part of the user manual that we created, uh, which was, by the way, also inspired from uh, Colibri learning material um, back when we started creating it. Uh, we trained about 3,000 young people who indirectly impacted 60,000 students uh, through the learning for learning model. Um, 
most of our training surrounded around using the hardware infrastructure because it was not the easiest of setups to use to have a tablet then connect it and make sure that the Colibri server is connected and then be able to access the uh, you know digital content download it and then make sure they learn it while they can you know go ahead uh, to train the students as well um, some of the learnings that we had uh, during this intervention is we need to increase the accessibility of uh, young people to be able to understand both the hardware as well as the software aspect, because some of these devices and the way we used it were not so easy uh, and one could easily forget. We had to continuously talk about how they could you know, access the hardware and the software. What if something went wrong? What if something wasn't working? What if something happened that you know these people have probably not seen happening with digital devices? Um, the next couple of learnings, and you know, they might be slightly contradictory, but I'll try and explain it. Is uh, we initially created a lot of channels, uh, which is where you know content was categorized, uh, and that did not do you know did not work great laurels for us. The reason being, with you know numerous number of channels, it becomes difficult to choose between one and the other, and you could also create a sense of you know fear or fear of missing out to say hey have i checked out every content that is required so that you know i am trained enough to go back to my students uh, however if we limit the number of categories it could help organize learning better uh, for the teachers themselves further uh, we need to encourage all of the teachers to explore content beyond the categories because uh, when we categorized you know content ourselves we wanted to include the minimal they needed to do because they had to go ahead train themselves and the students but at the same point of time encourage them to explore other channels and not restrict it uh, we also found another fact which is it is better to have engaging videos or games than to have pdf and reading files uh, to be chosen from the larger library the reason being um, Engagement basically helps the teacher understand better, but at the same point of time, involve the other children in the community. Um, the last couple of learnings that we had is uh, take inspiration from learning equality manuals. I think you guys put in a lot of effort to make sure each and every picture talks about specified models and how you know one could understand it better. So we took inspiration from that. Uh, but at the same point of time, it was important for us to build our own guide uh, because uh, teachers or rather students that we were working with who were supposed to act as teachers had a very different context from what generally a teacher would mean. Hence, they needed to, you know, we needed to step up and go one more step ahead uh, in order to train them. Uh, so that has been our time and this has been our intervention. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but thank you so much. Great, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Oman. Um, we are moving along uh, with our presentations. We have um, three more. I think in the interest of time and just, you know, because these presentations are so fantastic, we don't want to um, cut anyone off um, so we can hear the full, the full thing. We might end up skipping our Q&A. Um, so please do continue asking your questions. Um, but if we are unable to do the Q&A at the end, we will. I'll make sure to direct them appropriately at the end. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, great. So next we have Francis Kagutha, who is a Calibri ICT coach with Windle International in Kakuma in Kenya. And Learning Equality has partnered with UNHCR since 2018 to implement Calibri in refugee and host community contexts, including Kakuma. Um, so I will turn it over to Francis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Greetings to all our viewers. I'd like to share with you a brief uh, presentation on our experience on the school managers as well as senior teachers training on Colibri usage and adoption. And uh, I'm Francis Gabuda and I work as an ICT coach with Colibri. I'm employed by Winter International Kenya and I'm working in one of the host community schools that is supported by UNHCR together with learning equality. We could start with the next slide. Okay, I would like to give a very brief introduction uh, by saying that Colibri has been running in Kakuma since August 2018, as Laura has mentioned, and much coverage was in the Kakuma refugee camp schools and uh, community centers. 
uh, host community centers, and there are two of them, that is Our Ladies Girls Secondary School and Tarach Secondary Schools, uh, successfully embraced Colibri in 2021. So this was a very much awaited uh, uh, project that has been in waiting for quite a long time. COVID-19 paved way to innovative offline education resources and Colibri stood out as the most preferred option for Kakuma users. Next slide. Um, in the next slide, we have to ask ourselves why we had to train the Kakuma teachers. And of course, the first point is that you cannot teach if you don't know anything that you are going to teach. So we felt that Colibri is a very important component and teachers must be trained on how to use it so that they can as well use it with their students. We also realized that it was easier for school managers and senior teachers to motivate their peers because if the school principal is aware of what Colibri is, then he or she is in a position to motivate the rest of the staff to embrace Colibri. And then we have got a very important point where a teacher service commission, which is the teacher employment body in Kenya, has a requirement that teachers must provide evidence of ICT inclusivity in their teaching activities. And what a better way to portray that than to use the point of a longer stay in schools because they are administrators. An ordinary teacher who is employed by the board might be tempted to leave the school if he or she finds a better uh, position elsewhere. So we felt that the school managers and senior teachers, because they are going to stay longer in school, it is good if they are given the Colibri skills so that they can continue running that particular project instead of training a teacher who is going to leave the school within the next one or two weeks. Next slide, please. Um, the Kakuma Colibri teachers training was conducted between 17th and 20th October, 2020. And uh, this was just when there was a lockdown of uh, COVID-19 in Kenya. And we successfully reached a target of 60 teachers who, whose composition was as follows. We had principals, we had deputy principals, we had senior teachers, as well as heads of departments. The training sessions were conducted in two cohorts and each cohort was having a total of 30 participants each. In the next slides, we want to explain, or rather I would like to explain the training methodology that was used. Uh, the training methodolo methodology was a mixed blend of refugee as well as host community teachers, keeping in mind that Colibri caters for both the institutions with, I mean, for both the centers as well. And uh, for each cohort, we had 30 teachers per cohort and the training ran for two full days for each cohort where the components of training was theoretical skills as well as practical skills. Next slide. Um, as the next slide is coming, maybe I can also touch on the focus areas of the teacher training. And we based our training on the four components of uh, learning equality when they are using Colibri. And the four training components are as follows. The first one is knowledge. We wanted the teachers as well as their learners to expound and under their understanding of learning and the role of Colibri in it. Then on the impacting of skills, we had an opportunity to facilitate the teachers practice on how to use and incorporate Colibri in, in their learning and teaching activities. And as one of my colleagues has mentioned, we have a number of teachers who are not very well conversant with computers as well as the digital devices. And we feel that that is an area where these skills can come in handy if you really want a teacher to continue using Colibri. And then the third uh, approach was the mindset. And this was to foster a pos positive mindset in embracing education technology, learning spaces. We conducted this particular training, or we teachers that Colibri was part of a scaffolding that came to support whatever that they have within their reach and they can adopt it. And last but not the least was the practice where the usage of Colibri in the classroom, and not only in the classroom, but also in other areas like capacity building, 
learning different skills can be embraced. And this has been a very good positive, there has been a very good positive uh, approach towards that because of the teachers as well as the learners who have started embracing Colibri for a number of reasons. We can go to the next slide where we are going to touch on the areas of the topics that we covered. And we had different sessions. And in the first session, we introduced the Colibri interface as well as the component, as well as the Colibri uh, library. Because this is a new uh, technology, especially to our host community teachers, this was a very important session for them to become uh, familiar with what Colibri is. Then the second session touched on models, different models of uh, blended learning. And we defined the blended learning to them. We identified some forms of, of blended learning, of course, which they have been doing, but they were not aware that they were conducting blended learning. And then the third one, we contextualized blended learning in a local setup, because we really have to do with the local available resources that are cheap and you are not going to spend a lot of money when you are going to access them. Next slide, please. Which leads me to session number three. And in session number three, we helped teachers to identify resources that they can use in a lesson. And this was uh, a planning of a Colibri, Colibri class. How does a teacher plan for this particular class? So the component of identify resources to be used in that lesson is very, very important. And not only identifying, but also importing those resources from the channels and putting them in a classroom setup so that students can be able to access them easily. Then we also taught the teachers on how to create and well and deliver a lesson, as well as preparing and administering of quizzes. And on these particular quizzes, we have a, a large number of learners even today who are coming at their own time and attempting some of these quizzes based on the topic that they have learned in class. So this means that already the teachers have taught the students and the students are coming to expound more on their understanding. On the fourth session, we now introduce the teachers to understand their own account, the teacher account, which we are calling the coach account. In the coach, coach account, we taught the teachers or we directed the teachers to navigate through their account, to understand the basic rights of the, of the, of the account as a coach, as well as viewing their, the progress of their learners. And then on the last uh, session, we also put the teachers together and were able to come up with some challenges that they face when they are trying to integrate ICT within their local community schools. Then the Colibri materials that we used is in the next slides. We did not uh, use a lot of uh, materials, but we basically used uh, two uh, KVF servers and we adapted other equipment and that based of 35 INS tablets. We had six laptops, we had one projector and the teachers were also uh, accessing Colibri from their own devices. It was a beauty to see them removing their smartphones, their tablets coming along with their, tab with their laptops, also to see whether they can be able to access Colibri. And they did that very, very successfully. Now in the next slide, maybe very, very quickly, let me share with you what we derived from that particular training or what the feedback, uh, the participants gave us as feedback. They mentioned that Colibri training should not be something that is done only once, but it should be ongoing. And for this, in the next uh, one or two weeks, we are also going to have a refresher uh, Colibri training for the host community teachers, and we are excited about it. The second feedback is that uh, we must include a lot of KICD content in addition to Mapping scheme, and this will be an added value to our uh, platform. It's evident that they really bring on board some of their own creativity, but they want to do it in a simpler manner where you don't need to go through a lot of uh, strenuous effort for you to be able to do that. And then one of the other uh, feedback that they gave us was the revamping or upgrading of the current KVF servers to accommodate more users, as well as increased processing speeds. 
because we found a challenge. You could, you could not uh, connect 30 teachers on one server and they work seamless. So I think we need to also to include, to upgrade that particular server so that it can accommodate more users and as well as, you know, increasing its uh, processing speed. And then I will uh, almost finish by saying that we also had some proposals for the next steps. And uh, three, main one, three main proposals came out and the first one was the proposed to host community teachers and learners refresh, refresh uh, sessions. This one I've already mentioned, it is ongoing and we still have one for teachers that is coming out very soon. The second one is the rolling out of Colibri usage by learners in host community schools. This one has been done only for two uh, secondary schools, but we also feel that this can be extended to some other primary schools as well. And then the third one is expanding the number of Colibri users during school times as school. And for this, I would like to mention that for me, I feel that during the school holidays, we cannot have the students just idling at home. They can access the facility, they can come to the computer lab and they can be able to carry on their life in the school holiday. This is purely voluntary on a voluntary basis. And last but not the least, I would like to share with the team uh, our tips for success. First one is the strengthening uh, of local support by partners, that is UNHCR, Windows International Kenya, Ministry of Education Foundation, and so many other partners that, that are coming on board. So this is one of the key successes of Colibri. Then the second tip for success is holding sessions for Colibri teams. And this is a very good session that we are having right now. And we can also build up on bootcamp for our learners. We can also have hackathons and we can even have conferences where we share ideas as well as expand our network from my colleague in Uganda, and I hope that I've learned, I'm going to incorporate it in my own workstation. Then the other one is that we can also work with other local education technology, uh, you know, resource developers. For example, you have one platform that is called the eKitabu, where we have the curriculum books in digital format, all put in one application, and it can be used by students. What a beauty if that kind of a resource can be incorporated in a Colibri that users can also get a feel that they have digital textbooks that they use in class on the Colibri platform. This will support content. And then for your consumption, the next slide, uh, we are go I'm going to share with you some few uh, pictorials on the actual uh, Colibri teacher training pictorials. And on the third, on the second picture on the right side of your screen, we have our uh, one of the principals who is my current principal receiving a certificate of attendance from our project manager. And then the last slide, uh, I would like also to share with you the faces behind the success of Colibri in Kama. Uh, we have a team of very eight able uh, people that are doing this great work. I would say that this is the engine, this is the oil that drives this engine and they are not ready to stop. And myself with the team, we are saying thank you very much for, from learning equality and we are still going to work harder and ensure that Colibri saw us to the next level. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Francis. That was a really informative and um, wonderful presentation. Uh, I know that there is definitely interest in the chat um, and receiving the presentations to reflect back on after. So we will definitely be emailing this out so that everyone can see the tips and the, um, the flow that, that was shared in these. Um, so our next speaker, we have two who are co-presenting. We have Maxwell Fundi from EduTab Africa who is joined by Ifantas Mutiga, who's a chemistry and biology teacher in Kenya. And EduTab has collaborated with other organizations in Kenya to help build community around the use of Calibri, and they've been supporting education in schools across the country. So I will turn it over to both of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Laura. Uh, I hope everyone can, me, can hear me okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, hi everyone. My name is uh, Maxwell Fundi. I work at uh, EduTab Africa. Um, so, if we could go to the next slide. 
So um, EDITAB Africa is a relatively young educational social enterprise uh, that was formed in Kenya recently by a multidisciplinary team of people, uh, including computer scientists, development specialists, and educators who are actually working before in education projects in other organizations supporting use of tech. Um, the work of EDITAB Africa mostly is from um, you know, education project implementations, doing research with um, collaborators, as well as driven, technology-driven uh, innovative learning projects. So we support schools, we work with teachers across academic level. So next slide, please. So um, uh, diving into our experience, um, so we've, we've had um, an experience using Colibri starting in 2018. Uh, just slightly before our organization was um, founded, and this included um, weekly visits uh, in schools in Western Kenya, where we could run um, mock sessions with teachers and students to get the teachers in a few schools in Western Kenya to get up to speed in, uh, in using Colibri. It was also relatively new to us at that time, so we were also sort of trying to find out what works. What mostly guided us in our trainings were the toolkit that had been provided by uh, learning equality to sort of help us, uh, because it was so new to us as well, help us to have a uh, useful session, uh, training sessions with teachers and students. So next slide. So uh, during um, that time, we also got to learn about other people who have been, uh, who, who had a grant at that time to do a small project in Colibri, and one of the organization was a Limu Resource Center in Malindi. Uh, part of our team heading there, headed there for a teacher training, which was conducted um, sort of in partnership with uh, uh, a Limu Resource Center, where there were about 20 teachers. And then uh, uh, moving fast forward to last year, we also sort of tried to explore the different ways uh, in which we could uh, get people uh, within the resource uh, center in Malindi to get access to learning materials through Colibri through a community network. Um, next slide. So um, then just before the pandemic last year, we had a very successful training of about 22 teachers from 11 schools. And one of the teachers who is the one who's co-presenting with us and this has formed the basis of the experience that I'm going to share today. So first, we, we know that we've been having government tablets around primary schools that have not been effectively used. And the motivation of having this teacher training was to explore different ways in which we could um, uh, you know, capacity build the teachers so that they can be able to use these tablets and the laptop they have at schools to deliver digital content. And this was through Colibri. So this happened um, just before the pandemic, and where we were having this setup, uh, where we were having this training was at a place called Mbuinjero, and we did set up a demonstration site where the two teachers came in. We split them into groups, um, ran mock sessions, you know, some as teachers, some as coaches, just to understand how Colibri works. And in this as well, we largely used guidelines provided for in the toolkit um, by learning equality. So next slide. So out of that training, um, it was very interesting to see the different kinds of people who attended. These were, you know, ranging from deputy head teachers, uh, teachers, ICT uh, kind of champions within their different schools. And one of the uh, one of the key uh, person uh, who has gone out of his way to actually help support other schools despite having very little uh, infrastructure in their school is a teacher, I'm going to call him Mwai, but he's also here, he's going to introduce himself. He teaches in um, Embu and he teaches biology and chemistry. And it's during that time we had this training that he got a little bit of these skills of using Colibri and because the primary schools where we had the primary school where we had the training uh, was just next to, to his secondary school. And mind you, his secondary school is a day school which doesn't have ICT infrastructure. He's, he, he picked it up and 
he's been supporting his students using his own personal laptop as a server. And he's also been trying to also train other schools within the locality to make sure that they also know and learn about Colibri and what it can achieve, um, you know, for the students and things like that. So uh, one of the key things here is that during these sessions, uh, during the training sessions, we were hoping that, uh, you know, teachers would pick it up and try implement them, uh, implement this in their schools because our team is still relatively small. So it, it, it would be very difficult for us to support each and every school. And therefore the model we were hoping to have is capacity build teachers who go then to their schools and start implementing Colibri. But then that was hit by the pandemic. But then despite that, uh, teacher Y who's a fantasy has, despite all these problems of pandemic and not, not having ICT infrastructure has picked it up and he's been um, really on the forefront trying to promote Colibri. And I am so impressed in terms of, he's also developed some of the materials in biology and chemistry that we put in a, in a channel for his school um, a few weeks ago. So having said that, next slide is for Efantus. So Efantus, please, if you're here, quickly introduce yourself and share your experience. Efantus. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yep. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Yes, my name yeah. is Fantas Mutiga. Hello, everyone. Yes, please. Can go you ahead. hear me? Yes. Yes, my name, my name is Fantas Mutiga. I teach in a school called Boinjero, which is in Embu County in Kenya. My experience in Kodibri has been uh, so good after being introduced by my friend Maxwell Fundi. And uh, Apart from learning how to install and how to use it, I've been able to help other schools, uh, which one is called uh, uh, my school, Bonjero Secondary, where we have been able to install uh, a Colibri and they use it uh, quite well. Also, I've been able to help a school called the Kirewa Primary School, which is in Meru County, where I went to install Colibri. I trained the teachers how to use the Colibri. Uh, there is also another school called uh, St. Mary's Kiga, still in Embu County, where I was able to train the teachers, install the Colibri, and train them how to use. I've also been helping them through any desk uh, remotely so that uh, where they find challenges, they can be able to reach uh, me. Uh, some of the resources that we have been able to use is the the FET simulations, sorry. There is the audios and uh, there is the PDF notes. As Maxwell has said, we used to use a, a tablet uh, from the primary section during my training uh, in a school. Uh, the teachers have responded quite well. They have been very enthusiastic and happy to see that they can teach uh, abstract concepts in a very easy way. For example, there is the concept on effect simulation on construction of circuit in physics. There is gas properties in chemistry, uh, which uh, the Colibri effect simulations can teach it very well. Uh, the challenges that I've faced is that uh, many principles within uh, the locality are not computer literate. So they don't see the need uh, for the uh, Colibri. Also many schools lack uh, computers and the laptops, and also even getting a router in some of the day schools and the primary schools, it's difficult. And uh, if we can have these resources, uh, we, can, uh, we can be able to do uh, a greater job. Uh, to conclude, um, if we can have a way of maybe uh, making Colibri more accessible, that is, uh, uh, we can have it uh, accessing Colibri from uh, online where students can be able to access from home. For example, my students are in these scholars and uh, during holidays, maybe with the phones from the parents, they can be able, if they can be able to access Colibri through online, it can be um, a better thing. I think that is all I am. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Efantes, for sharing your experience. So um, that has been it.
uh, from our side. And uh, it's been very nice being here and also learning from the previous presentations. Uh, yeah, we'll be looking forward to questions, comments um, uh, during the QA session. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful to hear from both of you for, for this. We really appreciate uh, your contributions. Um, we have one last presentation, which is a video clip by Jack Dujanovich from the Idaho Department of Corrections in the US. Um, IDOC has been implementing Calibri through their, um, through their corrections education program. And in the clip, you will also hear a bit about how the students are familiarized with the platform. Um, so Jack is not presenting live, but is, I believe is on the call. Um, so feel free to drop any questions into the chat um, for him. And great, Rudy, I think you can go ahead and play the clip. One of our primary missions here in the Robert Jan School is to provide an opportunity for inmates to obtain their GED. They must pass four computerized tests in the area of language arts, social studies, science, and mathematics. Here at the Idaho State Correctional Institute, we encourage inmates to pass language arts, social studies, and science first, and then they will move on to GED mathematics where Calibre continues to play a key role. The modular blended learning system itself includes a small group discussion led by the GED instructor and peer-to-peer -peer tutoring with the Common Core textbook. Direct instruction utilizing the whiteboard or smartboard, followed by, finally, the Calibre's computer-based training system. Learner orientation. Learner orientation is instructor-led introduction to the math GED game plan. We have the learner take a pretest from the Common Core Curriculum textbook, and then we grade the test to identify knowledge gaps and assess the learner's placement in the GED class. We then assign a peer tutor and then enroll the learner in the appropriate Calibre GED class. We educate the learner in the use of Calibre by having them use the How To Start with Calibre channel. Have the learner work in Calibri within the assigned module they were working on during the whiteboard peer tutor direct instruction. The learner should have a solid enough understanding of the module to need minimal assistance from the peer tutor. If the learner continues to struggle with the module's topic in Calibri, the peer tutor will review the areas that the learner is struggling in on a more specific level and revisit our modular blended learning system to successfully guide the learner through the topic. Calibri includes videos, flexbooks, Flixes, and other resources for the learner to utilize. Learners are encouraged to utilize available hints provided for each problem before seeking help from his tutor. If the learner needs a considerable amount of help, the tutor may assess the situation and revisit additional topics as necessary. Thank you. Now I will turn it back over to Mr. Dujanovic. Thank you, Mr. Henry. As you can see, Calibri plays a key role in getting inmates to the point where they can take the math GED test with the appropriate level of knowledge and confidence. Our GED, P GED program found the best way to integrate Calibre into the modular blended learning system, then created GED tutoring guidelines utilizing the Common Core textbook, whiteboard tutoring, and then finally placing the learner on Calibre itself. We very much appreciate the opportunity to integrate Calibre into our modular blended learning system. It has been a successful team effort. Thank you for joining us today. Great. Thank you, Jack, for, for sharing that video clip. It was really informative and um, great to hear some uh, different cont contextual perspective. Um, we are running very short on time. Um, as I said before, we didn't want to cut anyone's presentation short because they were all uh, so great. Um, so I think we are going to skip the Q&A 
Um, however, you know, please write your questions in the chat if you have any, and we'll do our best to connect you afterwards and answer them. Um, we really were excited about doing some breakout groups. Uh, they're going to be shorter than expected. I think we uh, we had listed 10 minutes here, but we're going to only do about three minutes. Um, we're going to try and make the groups small. Um, and this is an opportunity for you to connect, um, to meet someone new from the Calibri community and uh, just share a little bit about your experiences. So um, please, uh, you know, uh, stay for this if you are able. And um, we do have a quick clip that we are excited to share after the breakout rooms. Um, so we will open them up in a moment, but um, just, I think, yeah, in the interest of time, just introduce yourself, um, unmute, uh, share your video, and just kind of give any context around your familiarity with Calibri, your geographic location, your context of work. Um, you know, we had also wanted to give you time to share some successes and challenges and supporting educators on using ed tech during the pandemic. So um, kind of whatever we have time for in the in the, the three to four minutes that we're gonna allot for this. So um, hopefully you'll meet someone new and um, we'll come back and, and share as a full group um, in about three minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Glad to see that we still have most Welcome of the crew here. <laughs> um, so I hope everyone had a chance to meet someone new. Um, I was in a breakout room with um, a couple of folks who I've um, uh, met before, so it was great to, to be able to chat with them. Um, we are going to do a very quick share back um, in the chat. I think we're still getting our presentation <laughs> um, back up here. Um, but if we could, because I know we only have two minutes left, but if everyone could write in the chat, um, you know, something that you learned in your breakout room. So maybe you met someone new, just in a couple of key phrases, because we don't have much time, but um, just share back what you learned um, in your breakout room, just one or two things. And then we will wrap up. We have a video clip that we're going to play and then and that's gonna be the end of our session. Great, looks like we have some people who are talking about teacher training. Um, made some potential connections to collaborate, which is great. If you would like, also use this time to drop in your um, email to anyone that you connected with to so that you can link up afterwards. And one question is, can we have a uh, an area or pool where we can link and continue the conversation. That's a great idea. Um, typically we use the community forum for that. And so when we send out a follow-up email, um, we'll think about the best way to facilitate that. And something else that I should mention is we did have a couple other um, participants who we weren't able to, um, because of time, um, have them present, but they shared some great information that we want to pass on. So in our follow-up email, we will be sending this presentation, and we will also be sending some information from a couple other organizations who have some good tips and strategies to share around training. So with that, I think um, given that we are at time, let's go ahead and move to our video clip. Um, if you have participated in a training with learning quality, um, you'll know that we love to do Calibri Fly at the end of our sessions. Um, so we have a, a compilation of some of that from different contexts. Already, I think the sound is not coming through. You might need to. Okay. Yeah. Let me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One second. Colibri. Awesome. Thank you so much. If, if anyone has any other Calibri fly clips they'd love to share with us, we're always excited to see them. So um, you can always uh, send us and we'll share it with the community. Um, great. So uh, that's the end of our session. Um, we will be sending out a follow-up email with all of the information that we covered today and with the presentation. So um, thank you all so much for joining. And we have one last slide, um, which is a quick plug. We are a finalist for the MIT Solve Challenge. And there is a community voting um, option where um, the, the organization with the most votes can 
um, receive a community prize. So if you can go to bit.ly slash MIT Solve Calibri, it'll take you one minute. We would very much appreciate it. Um, and that's it. So yeah, thank you so much for joining and we're looking forward to doing another one of these sessions soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you, bye. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye, bye. see you another time. Bye, bye, bye. You. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, bye. 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 Bye bye. Bye.